Hey guys, welcome back to the lab. Today at the bench, I have a very cool item to show you. A gentleman in Florida contacted me about conserving this 1952 Dodgers yearbook that has been signed by the team. So as you can see, this has arrived in its protective sleeve, and I know these are great for collectors and dealers, but as a paper conservator, they're not my favorite for a couple reasons that I'll demonstrate later in this video. So this item has a few main problems. The cover has broken at the fold and it must be mended. The original staples have rusted and they need to be removed, and the innermost two folios of this booklet have pulled through the staples. So I'll quickly flip through for any baseball fans that would like to see the whole thing. So I think it's really cool that this booklet was also signed by some of the wives of the players, and they wrote kind of personal notes to the recipient. Um, I think that adds kind of a level of interest. And I am not a big baseball history buff, but I do know who Jackie Robinson is, and I did geek out a little bit over getting to work on this item. So these are the two innermost folios that have pulled loose through the staples, and you can see there the rust on the paper um, from those staples. All right, so while I'm flipping through the rest of the book, I am going to talk a little bit about that plastic sleeve. So pluses are that it's archival, it's relatively inflexible, so the item inside probably won't be bent or it would be harder to bend that item. And you can also see what's in the sleeve without opening it. Minuses are that there's only a narrow opening for the item. And even if the owner or user is careful, um, this can cause and will cause abrasion and possibly tearing to the paper edges. Also the sliding motion against the flat plastic inside can abrade or smear media printed on the paper, especially pigment or graphite based medias that have tiny particles in them. Another minus is that if water got into the sleeve, the item inside would mold much, much faster than if the item were in a paper sleeve. So I'm demonstrating here with some notebook paper in the sleeve, how easy it is to abrade on the edges of this opening of this plastic. Even if you're careful, it can happen. And I absolutely understand if you're selling these, you want people to be able to see what they're buying. That's kind of the whole point. And so you just have to weigh the pluses and minuses. Maybe if this was in your own private collection, you might be tempted to store it in something like this. Um, this is a four flap wrapper. And this is what most archives would use for their pamphlets and booklets. So it's just paper, it's got four flaps, the outer covers are bored, the whole thing is acid free and leak free. You can put a label at the top uh, so you know what's in it. Um, and that may just be better for long term storage if you happen to own this book yourself. All right, so now I am going to carefully remove the rusty staples from this. So I use a micro spatula and get up under the kind of legs of the staple. And I like to provide some counterweight on the other side of the staple while I'm pulling. The goal here is not to just rip the staple through the paper. Um, I really obviously try to avoid that. So sometimes the rust clings to the paper. There will be rust on the staple, rust on the paper, and it kind of acts like a glue. And so these can be difficult to remove essentially because they're stuck. So I'm going to flip it over move the broken cover out of the way. And then I'm going to use my micro spatula again on this side to get up under the staple and wiggle carefully and also push from the bottom gently. Okay, so both staples are out. There is a tiny piece of paper stuck to that one, but it's okay. All right, so now I'm going to surface clean um, the innermost folios around this rust just to get off any loose particles. And this soot sponge I'm using um, is also called a vulcanized rubber sponge. And as it gets dirty, I just use scissors and trim off the dirty part, and then I can keep using the same piece of sponge. So I'm also going to surface clean the parts that I am mending. And there are two reasons for this. First of all, um, any surface dirt that is present when you do a wet mend, like a wheat starch paste mend, will wick into the paper and it can cause really bad tide lines and it doesn't really come out in the future unless you wash the whole thing. 
Secondly, it helps your mins to stick. And so that is why I take my time and am careful to clean all of the areas that are being mended. And I'm using this little piece of paper so that when I surface clean and use that piece of vulcanized rubber, I am pulling towards the edge of the paper, not pushing inward. And I don't want the sponge to hit the other side of the broken paper and damage it, abrade it, roll it up. Um, that will, one, damage the item, and two, it makes mending extra hard. All right, so after surface cleaning, I pull samples of long fiber paper so I can select an appropriate weight and color. I am looking for a weight that is heavy enough for the repeated opening and closing of the cover, but not so heavy that it eventually breaks the original material. Um, the second sample I am looking at, that little darker square, is for the infill on the cover. The bottom of the fold is missing, as you can see, and the infill will give extra support to this area and it's also there for aesthetic purposes. In terms of color, I usually try to select a mend and infill papers with similar tones, but that are lighter in color. The purpose of this treatment is to stabilize the original materials, not to try to cover any trace of the damage. This is to make this item handleable, but not to try to hide the condition in order to inflate the resale value of this item. Conservation treatments uh, like the one I'm performing with proper documentation have the potential to increase the value in an ethical manner. So now it's time to shape the infill and mending pieces of this long fiber paper. So I'm gonna take a piece of plastic. It has X's on it for my peace of mind because I am going to use a Sharpie. And if that piece of plastic is not there, I have had a really bad day and I have like weird nightmares about this, even though it's highly unlikely that I would just stab an original item with a Sharpie. Um, you know, I just like to be safe. So I put X's on it so I can see it and I can feel the plastic and I know it's there. Um, so what I do is I just come around all the damaged areas to make sure that they are covered by the mend. Um, the other reason for doing this is aesthetic. If you have an organic shape, it shows up less obviously than a straight line. So now I'm going to take my little template here and my long fiber paper, and I am going to do a water tear. Again, this is an aesthetic choice. I like a water torn paper if it's supposed to be very unobtrusive because the fibers pull out of the paper and it provides kind of a gradient instead of a cut edge you can see. So I'm just going to hold what I want to keep in place uh, very snugly with my thumb and then pull off the edge piece that I don't want to keep. So while I don't advocate uh, simply watching my channel and then trying to execute these techniques on your expensive or your very precious books and documents, if you're interested in getting into a program or if you like to do book arts or if you have not very precious and not very expensive items um, that you would like to try these techniques on, I do list my tools and materials in the video description of all my videos. And if I've forgotten anything, if you see something and you're like, that is not listed in your description, um, definitely let me know in the comments. I appreciate it. So now I am going to straighten the paper fibers out away from the edge, and then I'm going to come in with my scissors and trim off the extra long fibers. And the reason for doing this is that if I leave them, um, these fibers pull loose very easily if they're just sticking out. Um, and so I trim them all off, leaving that gradient so that the paper edge isn't super obvious. Again, you can see there's a little gradient there and I'm showing you there trimmed versus untrimmed. And normally I do like to use my tiny little tungsten scissors for this, but unfortunately they have some PVA stuck on them and they won't cut very well. So I need to clean the PVA off, um, but I was kind of in the groove. So I'm using my big scissors for this. 
All right, so now it's time to check the fit of the mend. I'm going to take my time doing this because shaping this uh, took a few minutes and I'd like to make sure it's right uh, before I proceed. So I'm using this glass weight because the cover isn't actually flat anymore. Each side at that break in the middle curls upward uh, where it was wrapped around the rest of the booklet. And I really need this thing to lay flat and stay still and be square. And I'm going to check that I have a straight line at the bottom and at the top with the ruler. Um, sometimes things were cut crooked back in the day and I need to know um, if I need to even that out or kind of pick one side or the other. All right, so I'm coming in with a wheat starch paste and this one is not as wet as I usually use because I really, really want to avoid creating tide lines on this cover. Um, that would go from making this an unobtrusive mend to an extremely obvious mend, and I'm trying to avoid that. So tide lines happen when you have kind of stuff in paper. In this case, the outside of the paper, you can see there's a lot of kind of hand oils and dirt. This is a very loved item by at least one of its owners. It was handled a lot. And if I put a lot of water on the back side of this paper and it runs through to the front side of the cover, it can cause the dirt and oils in this paper to migrate, which will leave lines on the outside of the paper. And it will look kind of ugly and I really don't wanna do that. So that's why I'm taking my time and I'm letting the sweet starch paste soak through into that um, acid-free piece of paper you see underneath the mend. All right, so I've got that laid down. So the Spunbound Poly is the release layer against the mend, and then the white kind of fluffy piece above it is a material called Evalon CR, I think. And it's kind of a new option instead of blotter. And blotter, when it gets damp, tends to warp, and then you can't reuse it. But the Evalon stays flat, and you can reuse it for a lot longer. All right, so I am checking. Everything looks good. Everything is stuck down and now it is time to do the same um, technique of kind of making a template and water tearing for this infill at the bottom. All right, so I'm gonna weight that and then remove the weight when it's dry. And I examine it. I think it looks really good. Um, it's not supposed to be completely invisible. Um, I'm looking for something structurally sound and aesthetically kind of sympathetic to this item. And again, I'm just trying to stabilize the material, not hide the condition of this piece. So now that that's trimmed, I am going to remold this fold um, around the kind of curve of the rest of the pages so it provides a better fit. And now it is time to punch and sew. So I am going to make a template so I know exactly where to punch the holes along the fold of this book. So I come in about a centimeter and a half from the head and tail. And then I punch three more holes in the middle to make five holes. Um, you want an odd number of holes if you want your knot to be centered in the middle of an item. So some of you might wonder why I didn't go back with modern stainless steel staples, and that's certainly an option. I always ask my clients about their goals for their item, and this client loves this piece, and he wants to have it out in an appropriate cradle so he can enjoy it and look through it. And I was concerned that the staples are going to break this paper in the same manner um, that this booklet arrived in, especially since Jackie Robinson's signature is near the center. And also staples would create two points of tension when the pages are turned. So my suggestion for my client was that I would use a linen thread and a pamphlet stitch because that would distribute the tension more evenly 
across the fold of this piece. So the wooden item here is a punching cradle and it holds everything still and provides tension during punching. I put two medium heavy pieces of paper underneath to support the mended areas as I push the awl through. And now I get my sewing supplies. That's beeswax and needles there in the Altoids tin. I am not waxing the thread um, on this piece because I don't have that much to sew and I'm not really worried about twisting or tangles. So this is a three strand linen thread. I think it's an 18-3. And in order to soften it further, I am going to make it a two strand. So I soften it with my fingernails a little bit to kind of loosen it up. So I actually hold the two strands I'm keeping in my mouth and then pull the other strand loose and that lets me have a left hand to kind of control the untwisting. So the fluffy soft two strand piece that I've made is at the right and the original three strand is much coarser and harder as you can see. So I want this thread to break before the paper. This can always be re-sewn as an item and the re-sewing is much less traumatic for this piece than a remending. So do I want this thread to fail soon? No, I do not. I like happy clients and I hope it lasts the rest of my clients' days. Um, but in maybe 50 or 80 years, yes, I do want this thread to break uh, before the paper tears. So I want the knot on the inside. So that's where I start. And I'm making sure to not split my sewing thread uh, with the needle because if I sew through the thread that's already in the hole, it will be impossible to kind of snug this sewing or tighten it at the end. So I take about a minute and carefully tighten everything, make sure it looks good and feels good. And I like it, so then I just tie it off and clip my ends. All right, so I am going to pick everything up and then I'm going to show you the four flap wrapper. It's just paper, it doesn't have any board that I made for this item. I do not want to slide this back into the plastic sleeve and have it catch any of the mends, any of the work I've done. And so I talked to the client and I just kind of uh, threw this in as a storage uh, option for this item, even though he's going to have it out. All right, so that is done and protected and it is gonna go back in its sleeve. All right, guys, well, that was a fun treatment and I hope you enjoyed watching. Be sure to subscribe to catch upcoming projects. Thanks.